Hi, and welcome to Anne's Family Recipe. Today I'm back in my mother-in-law Mary Lynn's kitchen and she's going to teach us how to make Easter bread. Mm. So mom, is there a story behind your Easter bread? Well, yes there is. It was a tradition in my family growing up and I brought that to my family as I started having children and they just loved it. And I don't know why, we just make it once a year. It's something special and it's not hard to make, but we just make it at Easter time. So this is like a loaf of yeast bread and it has a little bit of a sweetness to it. It's really rich and buttery. Yes, it's a sweetened dough. And then is there a glaze on top? I can't remember. I glaze mine and I put some little sprinkles on top. Um, there's different variations that you can decorate it to put. Yes. Oh, and yes. you were telling me too, sometimes in Italy they'll put hard boiled eggs on yes. top? Yes. They'll, 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 they'll put be raw. the colored uh, Easter eggs that aren't cooked yet and they'll bake it with the uh, loaf of Easter bread that's been braided or however they make it. But so they I, cook I, with the I've never baked. done that. Yes. I yeah, just, we're not going to do that today. We're just yeah. going to use sprinkles because I think the kids are going to come help us yes, decorate. decorate. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay, so what's step one for our Easter bread? We will add the dry yeast mm -hmm. to the warm water. Okay. And with um, sugar. Sugar. So we have um, three tablespoons of dry yeast and also three tablespoons of sugar. Perfect. Okay, so three three. into a quarter cup of warm, warm water. water. Yes. And then mom has, um, she buys her yeast in bulk. See, like a big tub here. Mm -hmm. And how do you store this, by the way? I keep it in the freezer. It stays fresh for a very long time. It, okay. it actually has a long shelf life to begin with, but mm -hmm. keeping it in the freezer will increase the... Um, and this is like an airtight container yes. here. And then this just has to sit and get foamy for just a couple minutes? Yes. Do I stir it together? Yes, we can, um, you can yeah, grab a little right. spoon. I have a little mini whisk over here. That's okay. Just whisk that until it gets a little... Everything's always better in miniature. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> so cute. Okay, so we're whisking the yeast. Three tablespoons yeast, three tablespoons sugar, and a quarter cup of pretty warm water together. Yes. And we'll let the dry yeast activate. Yes. Our next step is to incorporate all the wet ingredients yes. together. We will incorporate the eggs, mm -hmm. the melted butter, sugar, and the lemon, vanilla and the lemon zest, and then we'll do some, I just add a little vanilla to everything, so why not to the Easter bread? Okay, we'll okay so everything. I'll give some amounts here. We're starting with four eggs. Four eggs. Okay. Yes. And then, do you want to take care of the lemon while I measure out the vanilla? Yes. So, um, Mary Lynn's going to juice half of a lemon, just through a little strainer to catch the seeds, yes. and then you're going to zest a half a lemon. This is a tough lemon. <laughs> you're strong, though. <laughs> <laughs> How much vanilla do we need? I would say about a teaspoon. Okay. Lemon zest as well. This smells so good. Fresh lemon and it really pure vanilla extract. The lemon zest really adds a nice scent and taste. Yeah, flavor with it's them. kind of a little Italian touch. I think a lot of Italian desserts and breads have a little lemon mm -hmm. in them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Do we whisk this together before we add in the flour? I will whisk it. Okay. It's, it'll mix well once we get it into. The we just want to beat up the eggs a little yeah, bit. Just, okay. Lightly. Ooh, I like your whisk. Beat them. That's fine. <laughs> okay, so next, oh, we didn't do the sugar. Let's add that in. Sugar. So one cup of sugar into our four eggs, teaspoon of vanilla, lemon juice and lemon zest. And lastly for our wet ingredients is this melted butter over here. And these, yes. And the yeast. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I melted the butter in the microwave and it kind of like thickened up. One and a half sticks of yes. unsalted. Unsalted butter. Melted butter. Mm -hmm. okay. This bread is super rich. I've had it every year at Easter time since I married Sean, so we're going on nine Easter's here. Mm -hmm. Finally, I'm learning how to make it myself. We have our yeast mixture. You can add that in there okay. as well. It got really thick. You can see it got kind of foamy and... Don't need to scrape it. You probably want all of that in there. Yeah. Okay. One more wet ingredient. Yes, three quarters of a cup of milk. Do you, what do you usually have on hand? Just like 2%? I usually have 2%. Okay, yes. you can so use whatever you have. Yes. Perfect. Okay. All right, so now we're going on to the seven cups of flour. Yes, we'll add um, 
Let's go with six and we'll start the mixer and we'll see whether or not we need that seven. Okay. Point. Why do you measure it out like that? It just depends on, you know, the day, the humidity. Um, you don't want it to get too dry, but okay. yet you don't want it too sticky. So we'll, we'll you judge the dough. dough. Yeah, the mixer will put it into a nice dough bowl and then we can decide if we need a little more or less. Well, I remember when we were making your apple pie together, and I'll link to that recipe video in the description box below, it was all about the texture of the dough. Like when you felt it, it kind of had that yes. Play-Doh texture. Yes. So we're looking for the texture. Yes. We're gonna see what the weather's like today, how the dough is yes. gonna come out. Yes. Okay. Yeah, those are all the factors involved. The other thing I'm noticing here, my mother-in-law has a two cup measuring cup, and I am super jealous because okay. I have always wanted one of these. I, the Pioneer woman always uses her massive really? two cup. Yes, it's like a little, okay. It's like a little saucepan almost, so this will make I, our measurement Honestly, very I don't easy. even know where I picked that up. <laughs> so we'll start with about six cups yes. and then go from there. Yeah, yes. Okay. Ooh, the trick is though, will it fit into our flour well, bag? You want, you want <laughs> oh no, I have to use this. Oh, okay. I don't have one. It's, it's a big cup. Big two cups. Okay, I have to attempt to use it. Being honest here, it's probably not going to work. Let's see. Do we want to make mention of the flour that I use? Oh yes. What okay. brand do you like to I, use? I always have great... Not things. sponsored, by the way. <laughs> Great success with the King Arthur unbleached flour for my bread. Yeah, it's incredible. I it's just tried to make my mom's Italian bread recipe just using regular flour from our grocery store and it just did not come out the same. I followed it to a T and she swears by this King Arthur flour. So I would highly recommend that you choose that brand of flour when you're making a bread because it always comes out really, really good. It, it, I always have good results with it. Okay, I'm being a little ridiculous here slash stubborn, but... Just we'll do two maybe cups. with your finger, yeah. you can eat them off. There you go. I'll use the one cup Check. after this. That's fine. I had to have my moment with the two okay. cup measuring cup. It's fine. It's quicker. Oh, well, it should have been. I, I made it more difficult. Okay, so that was two, two and we need we'll about four more. Six. Yes. Well, I'm making a huge mess. That's, so that's okay. That's quite all right. How okay. much is this going to make? This How many will loaves? probably make about three loaves. Okay. Small to medium in size. Yeah. I, I guess in my mother's generation, they didn't have the uh, luxury of having a KitchenAid mixer with a dough hook, so everything would have done, been done by hand. Wow. In big can't bowls. Imagine. Yeah, it was a lot of <laughs> labor intense. Okay, so we have the mixing bowl attached to my mixer, and we're using the dough hook, and we are going to turn this on slow until it starts to uh, mix. And once the flour is incorporated, we'll bring it to a dough bowl. We may have to add that extra cup of flour, but we're going to start with this first. Okay, and it'll just take a couple minutes. A few couple minutes. Yeah. And you said once the flour incorporates, would you bring it up to like a medium speed, or do you just kind of keep it on low? Yes, the whole no, time? I'll, I'll bring it up to a higher speed. Okay, great. So now we have our dough ball that came into like a nice form and it's perfect because we, it's not I wanted to sticky. mention we ended up adding another half a cup of flour. Yes, yes, so instead for, of the full seven. Yeah, so for today it was six and a half cups of flour. And yes. What, do you, what would you say it feels like? Play-Doh. Okay. Nice yeah. and soft, it's not sticky, and it's perfect. The mixer did all of the work. It was about two minutes on um, medium to high spill speed. Mm -hmm. So now we are going to spray our bowl and we're going to let this rise probably for about an hour okay. until it doubles in size. And we're just using the same mixing bowl yeah, we mixed in. Technically you can um, start with a fresh clean, clean bowl, bowl, but we're going to save some time here yeah. and just spray the bowl. It'll be fine. <laughs> so I'm just using, what is this, canola oil baking spray. Perfect. We're going to cover this with plastic and let this dough raise at, on a, in a warm spot. Mm -hmm. And then um, We'll probably cover it with a towel, towel as well, so we can use that. Okay, clean your towel. This towel. And, and then, then, what were you telling me about this particular area of her counter? Is her perfect? Oh well, my spot. dishwasher's on, and it always creates a really nice warm hot spot. Not too hot, not too cool. Yeah, just the right uh, temperature, and it'll raise nicely right here in this ni nice warm spot because we want this to increase double in size. Mm -hmm. and we'll get ready to make our loaves. I think that's such a great tip. Mm -hmm. So put it right on the counter over top of that dishwasher if it's running. It'll be a little yeah. warm, so we'll throw the tea towel over top and, we'll just let and it wait about an hour. Yes. Okay. So we just enjoyed a fantastic Sunday spaghetti dinner courtesy of Mary Lynn here. <laughs> so the bread rose for a little over an hour. I would say like two and a half hours at this point because we sat down and had a nice family meal together. Yes. Another tip that you had was sometimes if you actually warm up that mixing bowl that you yes. put the bread in, that yes. will really help get the yes. process going. Yes. 
So you'll just have to see, but you want the dough to double in size, yes. right? Yes. So now it's ready for the big reveal under here. Oh yeah. And it looks wonderful. Nice and neat, doesn't it? Puffy, yeah. So, yeah. All right, so the nice thing about this bread is we don't have to knead it anymore or roll it out. We're just gonna shape it into loaves and then allow it to proof again, right? It just yes. rises a little bit more. I'd say about 20 more minutes. Okay, just because we'll we've handled it a little bit. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we'll bake them. Yes. So show me how you shape this. Okay, so we're going to punch this down. Okay. And you can tell that it um, has some air bubbles in it. Mm -hmm. Oh, this feels really good. Yes. That's nice. Okay. So the dough's out and our work surface is floured. Yes. So what we're going to do is today we'll make uh, two small loaves and one round loaf. Okay, so mom's gonna divide this up and then we'll see how much fits into each pan. Yeah, the, the bread pans that I'm using aren't very large. They're like sort of a mini loaf pan. Okay. So I'm sure that these two pieces here will be enough for these two. We're going to spray them with some cooking spray. Oh, I can do that while you And then the we are going to break the round loaf just to make it a little special and to show the technique because it's not hard at all. Okay, I've so, never braided a loaf before. That's exciting. So you can, let's, we can just kind of shape these with so our So would hands. you say you used about half the dough and divided it into two for the mini loaves? Yes. And then the other half we're going to put yes. in the circular pan. So you're just going to kind of purse it underneath the um, ends there. And then just kind of like place it in the Okay, so kind of just like a little long. Yes, yes. <laughs> Perfect. And now is that was easy. I like that. We're going to. Um, oh, should I spray this? Yes. We're going to roll this probably, I'm going to say my board's around 20 inches long. But we're going to kind of, the, the dough has a nice elasticity, as you can tell. Yeah, it feels like really it. nice to work so with. So if you'd like to roll your um, section of dough, portion of dough, and then we're going to get this braided and it'll have, add a nice festive touch for the Easter holiday. What we're going to do is we're going to start with the ends and kind of mold it so that it sh you know, sticks together. Okay. And then all you have to do is take one piece over the other. This is just a two-part braid. So we're kind of twisting it. That looks really pretty mm -hmm. though. And then we'll bring it into the... Reminds me of Rapunzel. <laughs> Her yeah. long braided ponytail. We'll bring, you know, don't be afraid of it too, because like I said, it has nice elasticity. Oh, yeah. And we're going to twist it a little bit more and then bring the two ends when they meet, and then we'll connect them just by um, holding the dough together and pressing it so that it sticks. Okay. We'll place this in our pan, and it's not hard at all. And then it's going to rise. Yeah. Okay, do these get covered again as they rise, or can you just let them set? I, I just let them set at uh, For like another 20 room minutes. temperature, yes. And while that, that is happening, then we can prepare the icing. Okay, can I just make a comment? Yes. This baking spray, this is Kirkland, that's Costco brand. Yes. This has the nicest mister. It's like a really fine it mist. It is, yes. This is so nice to use on these baking pans. Yes. So I would recommend this Kirkland brand. <laughs> yes, it is nice. Okay, so these are gonna rise and we'll make our we'll, sweet glaze. We'll get ready for the glaze, yes. Nice. This looks like a pretty classic glaze. I see powdered sugar, vanilla extract, we've got melted butter, and yes. then we're adding a little bit of flour. Just a very little uh, to this recipe, one teaspoon, and it's a tip that I kind of like bully a baker <laughs> to give me his recipe from his bakery for his icing because I, I wondered why the glaze would just dry to a nice glaze. Yeah. The icing would dry to a it nice It has like glaze. a nice thicker consistency and it, to it. And it doesn't stay wet. Yeah. So somehow the flour incorporated into this recipe helps it. Yeah. Oh, that's a great tip. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're adding that secret ingredient, a little bit of flour today. Yes. So how much powdered sugar do you need? We are going to start with two cups of powdered sugar. Okay. Two cups. I'm not using my two cup measure anymore. <laughs> Any more practice with that. Okay. okay. And then we add our melted butter. Mm -hmm. And this was half a stick? One half a stick of unsalted melted butter. Mm -hmm. And then we have one teaspoon of just regular all-purpose flour. Okay. And then you 
can start stirring that and sure. I will add a teaspoon to maybe a teaspoon and a half of um, vanilla. Okay. I like the vanilla. This really is a sweet, rich bread. It is so delicious. Now that looks like we may have to add a little bit of water. Okay. Do you ever add milk? Um, no, always water. Ooh, that's interesting. I would have assumed milk. So we'll just add a little at a time to get that consistency nice and smooth. Is there any particular reason to do the water instead of milk? Or? You know, I'm not sure. I always thought if you made an icing with milk, would it stay like food safe when it's set out? Okay. I'm not sure. Yeah, I've always used water. The, the That's glaze really glaze. good to know. Yes. We're using a small whisk to get out the tiny lumps that may be in there from the powdered sugar. We want it to have like a smooth, velvety consistency. And mm -hmm. that looks pretty good. Smells pretty good too. Mm -hmm. The last step before our loaves bake in the oven is an egg wash. And this is literally just one egg that we whisk together. Mom's got her pastry brush here, so we're just gonna brush the tops of all three loaves and then pop them in the oven. This will give it the golden brown um, color mm -hmm. that you see in most of the beautiful pictures when you Google an Easter bread recipe. Mm -hmm. It's that nice golden brown. A little professional touch here. Yes. So our beautiful loaves are ready to be baked. Yes. The oven is preheated to 350 degrees. And since these are really small, we're thinking we're just gonna keep it at 350 for yes. about 35 minutes. Yes. Then we'll check it. What are you looking for? Well, it, it's done. it will um, obviously be bigger than what it is now. Mm -hmm. And then, um, just like that golden brown. You can do like a cake tester to make sure that it's cooked all the way through. Okay. But it, you, you'll be able to tell, you know, once it's Mm -hmm. And then mom was saying that if you make just one large loaf, of course the baking time will be a little bit longer, yes. but also you might want to reduce the temperature to 325 for the last like 15, 15 minutes. minutes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Just to prevent burning. Yeah. And we'll bake these um, center rack in the oven mm -hmm. and that way it'll cook from the bottom up and have time to turn brown on the, on the top, top layer. Nice and evenly. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can't wait. So our bread is finished baking. Yes. It smells so good in here, doesn't it guys? It does. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. it smell like a bakery? Mm -hmm. Now just to recap, we bake the bread for about 30 minutes, 35 minutes? Yes, at, at 350 degrees. Yeah. And then we turned the heat down to 325 degrees and baked it for another, I'd say it's another seven minutes. Okay. May I add that they are still slightly warm and okay. that'll make the glaze kind of melt over them and drizzle down the sides, which will be extra yummy. Right, Emma? Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Yeah. I start with okay, so we have our glazers here. Okay. You each get one to glaze. Do you want to help with the big loaf? This Easter bread is so incredibly delicious. We are loving it. It's like we're having Easter a month early, huh? Yes. <laughs> now, you could freeze this, right? Yes, I would wrap it in, after it's completely cooled and dried, I would wrap it in wax paper and then either in a Ziploc bag and seal it airtight or okay. wrap it with foil. Okay. I would first use the uh, wax paper. But, as a layer. to be honest, it's probably best fresh. Yes. Don't you think? Yes, <laughs> I agree. Totally. It's so delicious to totally. out of the oven. Yes. Oh, nice that's my favorite sweet one. And fluffy and warm, I love it. Okay, well thank you so much for joining us in my mother-in-law's kitchen thank today. Thank you, I'm happy to have you here. Thank you so much. Um, Did you like it? Yeah. You like the Easter bread? Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and find me on Instagram at Ann's Family Recipe. Thank you so much for joining me in Mary Lynn's kitchen and I'll see you again soon with another family recipe. For the full recipe, check the description box below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for joining me in my kitchen. Bye. Bye.